This video was made in collaboration with the Attack on Titan Wiki. For more information, check out the link in the description. The Life of Hanji Zoe, Attack on Titan. Hanji Zoe was the 14th and current commander of the Scout Regiment, formerly a section commander in charge of the 4th Squad, until the death of the 13th commander Erwin Smith, who named Hanji as his successor shortly before. Hanji conducts research on Titans to the point of being obsessed with them. As a result, they're deeply interested in Eren Yeager and his ability to transform into a Titan. Welcome to the Imagi! In today's video, we're going over the life of Hanji Zoe. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Imagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media accounts. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. A Choice With No Regrets Part 2 Hanji is among the many surprise recruits present when Levi, Isabel Magnolia, and Furlan Church are introduced to the Scout Regiment as new recruits. Along with Moblet, Hanji enthusiastically watches Levi demonstrate his ODM gear skills during training, commenting on how individual skill and style weigh in on performance and outcomes in battle. Ilse's Notebook, Notes from a Scout Regiment Member Hanji is impatiently waiting to leave Tross District for the 49th expedition outside the walls, wanting to capture a Titan to study. Hanji tries to convince Levi and Mike Zacharias to help them capture one, but they both dismiss them. After the expedition has begun, Hanji attempts to convince the commander, Erwin Smith, to authorize a Titan capture operation, but he refuses. They then take their frustration out on Oro Bozad, telling him how important it is to study their targets if they're going to win while choking him. After this, Titans are sighted in the vicinity, and as the scouts prepare themselves, Hanji runs ahead and attempts to lead a Titan to the walls. The Titan briefly chases Hanji, but suddenly changes course and runs to a spot in the woods. Hanji follows it and tries to communicate with it, but the Titan doesn't pay attention. Taking advantage of the Titan's distraction, Oro attempts a surprise attack, but stops when Hanji asks him to, and is caught by the Titan. However, Levi kills it and saves Oro, much to Hanji's disappointment. Hanji and the Special Operations Squad then find a notebook and the corpse of a scout regiment soldier named Ilse Langnar. Upon reading the notebook, Hanji returns Ilse's belongings to her parents and is able to convince Erwin to authorize capture operations. A short while after, with the help of the Special Operations Squad, Hanji is able to successfully capture Titans with no casualties. The Struggle for Trostark Hanji later appears leaving Trost District on another expedition with the Scout Regiment. As Hanji gleefully awaits the mission departure by the gate, they begin teasing Levi for the large amount of fanfare he's receiving from onlookers, stating that they hope to see an abnormal Titan on the missions, to which Levi retorts that Hanji is an abnormal. After the Scout Regiment departs, Hanji is next seen excitedly flying through an abandoned town using their ODM gear. Hanji grabs the Titan's attention, promising that they won't hurt it and when the Titan swings at them, Hanji easily evades it and kills the Titan. Eve of the Counterattack Arc Hanji and Mike are assigned to take Eren to his court hearing in front of the leaders of the military. They're present with the rest of the scout regiment as Levi beats up Eren and checks on his condition after the tribunal is over, noting that Eren's lost tooth grew back. Later, when Eren and the Special Operations Squad are at the former scout regiment headquarters, Hanji explains that they're in charge of experimenting with captured titans Sonny and Bean and begins to prep Eren on previous experiments, but noting his enthusiasm to learn, ends up talking all night until morning. They're then interrupted with news that Bean and Sonny are killed. Rushing to the site, Hanji cries at the loss of their titans. Hanji later moves forward with their experiments on Eren. When it turns out that Eren can't turn into a titan at will, Hanji is a little disheartened. However, seeing Eren's titan hand later on causes Hanji to react overexcitedly and breaks the tension between him and the special operations squad. Hanji excitedly runs to Eren and touches his titan arm, burning their hands on the exposed muscle. When they find a teaspoon being clutched by Eren's titan arm, Hanji concludes that Eren's titan powers are only awakened when he has a clear objective in mind, such as the moment when he defended Mikasa and Armin from cannon fire. Hanji also hypothesizes that this switch must have a good reason, as well as being connected to the titan's nature. The 57th Exterior Scouting Mission Arc During the 57th Exterior Scouting Mission, a female titan attacks the scouts and decimates their ranks. After the female titan is lured into the scout's trap in the forest of giant trees and is captured, Hanji mockingly explains to it that the special target restraining weapon is designed so that the more her wounds heal, the more her joints will be immobilized. 
When Eld wonders why they weren't told of the plan to capture the female titan in the Forest of Giant Trees, he speculates that Erwin only told those who were in the regiment before the fall of Wal Maria to be sure they weren't spies, and that Hanji is among those who were notified. The female titan lets out a deafeningly loud roar, leading numerous titans to begin swarming the area and attack it. When they begin to devour her, Erwin orders all squads to engage the titans and defend the female titan to death. Hanji fights relentlessly among her comrades, but to no avail. The commander, realizing that all is lost, orders his soldiers to pull back and return to Kalaneth district. As they retreat from the forest, Hanji asks Erwin why he ordered Levi to resupply and split off from them. Erwin asks if Hanji saw the female titan's operator get eaten along with the titan itself, and Hanji realizes with horror that their enemy is still alive. Assault on Stohe's Ark during Annie Leonhardt's rampage through Stohes district, Hanji again uses the special target capture weapons to halt her. After capturing Annie, Hanji goes to the ground and holds her sword to Annie's eye, telling her she's too far in to get Titans to devour and free her this time. Hanji then states that they will be the one to devour her and get all the information they can from her. Their taunts provoke Annie into lashing out, and Hanji is forced to retreat to the rooftops as Annie breaks free. Hanji laments that they didn't have enough traps and orders their squad to follow Annie, as Eren enters the battle in his titan form, Hanji observes that he's retaining control of his titan. Eren begins pursuing Annie and Hanji orders their squad to split up and work their way around over the buildings as the two combatants enter an open area of the district. Mobley notes with terror that the two titans might destroy the entire district, but Hanji orders him to follow Eren's plan. Eren manages to immobilize Annie at the base of Walshina, where she encases herself in an impenetrable crystal. Hanji orders the crystal containing Annie to be moved to safety and worries for the future of the scout regiment after the failure of this mission. Annie is later brought deep underground and kept under the scout regiment's custody. Clash of the Titans Arc While scouts haul Annie's crystal away, Hanji stands by and assures she's secured with ropes and tarp. Noticing many of the scouts are surprised by something, Hanji runs over to see that there's a giant titan within the hole in the wall made by the female titan's attempt to escape. Moblet asks them for orders, but Hanji stares in shock, wondering how the titan could be there and if it was just a coincidence or if all the walls are filled with them. Hanji's thoughts are then interrupted when Pastor Nick slaps his hand on their shoulder and tells them not to let the sunlight touch the titan. At Nick's direction, they climb on top of the wall and Hanji has the titan covered with a makeshift tarp. Hanji begins questioning Nick on why the titan is in the wall and why he had kept quiet about it. However, Nick dodges their questions by blaming the scout regiment for the current situation and saying that he has business to do, requests to be let down from the wall. Hanji then becomes furious and grabs Nick's shirt, holding him over the edge of the wall and telling their squad to stay back. They lament about the morals of the scout regiment and their desire to take back freedom. Demanding that Nick speak, when he refuses, Hanji moves to drop him off the edge, but Nick stops struggling and claims that his life is not worth revealing his information. He begs God to deliver him. After a brief hesitation, Hanji throws him back into the wall and sits on the edge, claiming it was all a joke. Hanji calmly asks Nick if all the walls are filled with titans, shaking. Moblet approaches them and Hanji expresses their fear of the unknown, claiming not to have felt this way since their first time outside the walls. Following the news that Wall Rose has been breached, the scouts prepare their journey from Stohes to Ermich district. Ignoring how close they are to departure time, Hanji studies something under a microscope until Levi comes to retrieve them. They join him in a wagon along with Pastor Nick, Aaron, Mikasa, and Armin. Though Armin is surprised to see a priest from the Order of the Walls, Hanji brushes his presence off with a joke. More seriously, Hanji explains that Nick's coming with them to witness reality, to see if that changes his unwillingness to speak. Hanji speculates that what Nick knows could be more important than the fate of humanity, and that's the reason for his silence. Levi notices that shard Hanji's holding and asks about it, prompting an explanation that it's a hardened skin fragment that remained behind even after Annie exited the female titan. It didn't evaporate or disappear, so Hanji compared it to a piece of the wall. Hanji discovered that their compositions were nearly identical. The walls must be made of humongous titans, and their surface is constructed with hardened titan skin. Hanji points out that plugging the breach in Wall Rose would be difficult without the right-sized boulder, but Eren as a titan might be able to use the titan's hardening abilities to seal the hole in the wall. Armin adds that they could also use the ability to seal Wall Maria, and then there would be no need to lay supply lines down to Shiganshina. They could go at night while the titans are inactive. Hanji considers and agrees that the group was small enough that they could sneak all the way there. In Ermich, Hanji takes stock of their situation and prepares their team for departure. When Levi brings Nick to them, after showing him all the refugees, Hanji asks if he has a change of heart. 
Nick is clearly distressed but can't tell them anything, saying that it's too great a decision for a single person. However, he can give them a name of a person the Order was instructed to monitor. She joined the Scout Regiment this year and she may know truths that they're unaware of. However, the girl is currently on the front lines with most of the 104th. Sasha interrupts to hand Hanji a message, which turns out to be a report on Annie Leonhardt's background. According to the report, there are two other members of the 104th who came from the same area as her, Reiner Brown and Berthold Hoover. During the 57th Exterior Scouting Mission, their unit in the Long Range Scouting Formation was given false information that said Aaron was on the right wing, which is where the female Titan attacked. The members of the 104th are reluctant to suspect Reiner and Berthold, so Hanji presses them for information regarding their behavior and any contact they may have had with Annie. Armin eventually realizes that Reiner had both the opportunity to learn Aaron's true location in the formation and pass it on to Annie. Hanji decides that when they next come in contact with the pair, the scout should act normally until the opportunity comes to lead them underground and confine them. Hanji takes a squad with them to rescue Krista Lenz and leads the scout to Utgard Castle, where there's a tower they can use to assess the wall. Their squad arrives at dawn just in time to rescue the cadets from the 104th, who had been trapped in the castle by titans. Hanji has everyone regroup on Wall Rose, where Emir is pulled up on a stretcher. Meanwhile, Krista speaks to Hanji on Emir's behalf, explaining that Emir had transformed into a titan to save them. Hanji hears her out and says that despite Emir's prior secrecy, the information she holds could be a treasure for humanity, so Hanji hopes they'll get along. Hanji also asks about Krista's real name, if Historia race is related to the race noble family. Krista confirms that it's true, and seeing her downcast, Hanji places a hand on her shoulder and tells her that it's nice to meet Historia. The garrison's advance squad arrives and Hannes informs the scouts that there was no hole in the wall, at least not between Trost and Krolva districts. With no titans around despite the previous sightings, Hanji prepares for the scouts to fall back to Trost and begins discussing alternative methods of titan entry with Moblet, but soon recognizes that Eren has fallen behind, talking to Reiner and Berthold. Shortly after, the two of them are attacked by Mikasa and they transform into the armored and colossal titans in an attempt to kidnap Eren. Eren transforms into his titan form and fights with Reiner at the bottom of the wall, leaving Hanji and the rest of the scouts to face the colossal on top. Hanji orders the scouts to swarm him, but the Colossal emits a giant burst of scalding steam. This time, however, he doesn't disappear. Hanji orders three of the four squads present to watch Berthold so they can kill him when he comes out. Capture is no longer an option. Hanji takes the last squad along with them to chase the armored titan. Hanji lands on Eren's shoulder to ask if he could break one of Reiner's legs with one of his grappling attacks to buy him time to escape. Eren nods in understanding, to Hanji's amazement and delight. Hanji theorizes that the Armor Titan's body can't be entirely hard like stone because he was able to move too quickly. Rather, like armor in the past, there must be points where the joints are not protected to allow for movement. Mikasa uses this knowledge to cut through the backs of Reiner's knees, giving Eren an advantage in his fight. Weakened, Reiner roars to signal the Colossal to fall on both him and Eren. Hanji and the other soldiers nearby are severely wounded from the explosion caused by the Colossal Titan's landing and are unable to pursue Reiner and Berthold when they escape with the captured Eren and Emir. Later that same day, Erwin arrives with the reinforcements and the lifts necessary to move the horses over the wall for a rescue mission. Hanji rouses themselves and asks for a map. Hanji uses the map to point out a giant forest to the gathered scouts. Even though Reiner and Berthold can change into Titans, Hanji suspects that other Titans will still be a threat to them. After all that fighting, they must be exhausted, and they'll need a safe and secure place to rest before attempting to absconding past Wall Maria, but warns the scouts that they only have until nightfall when the other Titans can't move. If the scouts can gather there before then, they might make it in time to rescue Eren. After the rescue party leaves, Hanji crawls away and asks for a horse even though they're unable to stand but despite that, still wants to go to Ragako to investigate the titan that can't walk. Seeing Hanji's determination, Moblet decides to go himself and tells them to rest. Some days later, Hanji reports to Erwin back in Trost District, bringing Connie with them to confirm the findings in Ragako. Hanji hypothesizes that the titans they fought within Wall Rose were citizens from there. Levi sours at the thought that he could have been killing humans this entire time, but Hanji offers up some comfort in that there's still no solid proof of that. The Uprising Arc Hanji is later seen performing experiments on Eren's titan form. After repeated transformations, Eren's titan progressively becomes weaker and more deformed, until it eventually collapses. Hanji and Mikasa try to free him from the titan, but find that his body has begun to fuse to it. As Hanji attempts to pull Eren free, they order Moblu to make a sketch of it. Mikasa cuts Eren free and Hanji declares the experiment to be over. Soon after, Hanji receives word from Moblu that Nick has been murdered. 
Immediately suspicious, Hanji goes to the crime scene and interrogates two members of the military police guarding the site, claiming to be an old friend of the victim. Upon observing Nick's corpse, Hanji is able to note telltale signs of torture on him and wounds on one officer's hand that suggest he took part in the beating. Pretending to believe the official story that Nick was killed in a robbery, Hanji tells the policeman that Nick will be avenged once they find the culprits. Hanji travels to the cottage where Levi's squad is staying to inform them of Nick's murder. Once recounting the full story is done, Nifa arrives with a letter for Levi from Irwin, which prompts Levi to have everyone evacuate the premises. After evacuating, Levi informs the group that the government has frozen all scout regiment activity and that they've been ordered to turn over Eren and Historia. Upon also learning from Nifa that Erwin has been arrested, Levi decides to smuggle Eren and Historia into Trost to keep them out of the government's hands, and Hanji agrees to lend him Abel, Keiji, and Nifa to help, while Hanji themselves and Moblet go to aid Erwin in the capital. Arriving at the scout regiment barracks, Hanji and Moblet wait until the military police have departed to speak with Erwin. Hanji informs Erwin of Eren's capture and tells him their theory that Rod Race is planning on eating Eren to steal his Titan ability. Afterwards, Hanji and Moblet regroup with Levi's squad, who have apprehended Sanus and Ralph. Hanji and Levi take turns torturing Sanus, who refuses to talk. After more torture only results in Sanus begging that they kill him, Hanji and Levi leave and force Ralph, at knife point, to read a script outside Sanus's door, making him believe he has been betrayed and is considered a lunatic by his comrades. This causes the man to break, revealing to Hanji the secret of the race family, the true rulers of mankind within the walls. After Sanus's confession, Hanji mocks him at length, revealing the truth about Ralph's apparent betrayal. Sanus is deeply shaken, but he warns Hanji that someone else will take his place and wishes them luck. Visibly shaken, Hanji leaves the dungeon and enters a room, violently kicking over a table. Levi walks in on their outburst and has Hanji fill in the rest of their squad in on their theory that Eren will soon be eaten. Hanji and Mobley travel to visit Erwin again, bringing news of the race family's true status. Erwin gives them the results of his investigation into the race family's property, but before they can continue, Erwin receives word that he's been accused of organizing a murder. He orders Hanji and Mobley to leave immediately, and names Hanji acting commander of the scout regiment in his absence. Afterwards, Hanji discovers Flagel being pursued by the military police and carries him to safety. There, they learn what really happened to his father and attempts to persuade him to continue fighting in his father's stead. When he states that they've already lost, Hanji reminds him with a smile that the scouts have always had a losing record. Using Flagel as bait, Hanji lures three military policemen into a trap, tricking them into admitting that the MPs murdered Flagel's father. Hanji and Moblet come to his aid, easily dispatching the three soldiers and revealing that the abandoned buildings of Trost are actually full of citizens who have heard the police admit to framing the scout regiment. Hanji and Moblet find Levi and his squad while they're interrogating a member of the military police, informing them that the military's coup has been a success, further telling them that the royal capital and the administrative district are now under Premier Zachary's control and that there's been no counter-rebellion so far. Although his squad celebrates, Levi points out that they still don't have any leads on Eren and Astoria. But Hanji claims that they may have the answer to their predicament, revealing Erwin's report of his investigation into the race family and explaining that the race family was attacked and slaughtered on the day of Walmaria's breach, with Rod being the only survivor. Hanji takes special note of the fact that the chapel that the family had been praying in when they were killed was also decimated, and that Rod used his fortune to have it rebuilt in the following years. Deducing that the chapel must be important to him, Hanji theorizes that's where he's hiding out. Hanji, Levi, and his squad arrive at the race chapel, finding the hidden doorway to the caves below. While the interior military police await them inside for an ambush, the scout regiment charges to open the door to the cave and roll in several gas canisters tied to barrels. They then charge in behind as Sasha uses flaming arrows to create a smoke cloud, and Armin fires flares to obscure them. During the battle, one of Kenny's subordinates fires a hook into Hanji's right shoulder, throwing them into a wall. Hanji then crashes down on the floor. As Rod Race transforms into a titan, causing the cavern to collapse, Levi orders Moblet and Armin to take Hanji to safety while the rest of his squad saves Eren. After squad Levi escapes the race caves, they begin pursuing Rod, with Hanji riding in a wagon due to their wounds. Hanji notes that they now know that only people of the race bloodline can use the Founding Titan's true power, and that if any race member does get the power, they will be controlled by the ideology of the First King and will not free humanity. As it's decided that they'll have to kill Rod Race, Hanji asks Historia if she's really okay with it. Arriving in Orvid, the garrison members stationed in the district are appalled to hear the scouts don't want to evacuate the district, and Hanji explains that the Titan is being attracted to the large populace, which is why they want to keep them in Orvid so they can direct where the Titan goes. 
As a backup plan, in the event that the garrison is unsuccessful in Rod's Titan, Erwin has Hanji and Moblet bring gunpowder, ropes, and a net to Erwin while the garrison tries to kill Rod with the wall's cannons. As Rod's Titan climbs up onto the walls and kneels in front of it, Eren transforms and grabs the hall of gunpowder Hanji brought and uses it to blow apart Rod's head. Following the battle in Orvid, Hanji attends Historia's coronation as Queen of the Walls. Two months after Historia's coronation, Hanji is actively engaged in running tests on Eren's Titan hardening ability in preparation for their journey to Walmaria. Hanji is seen in Trost District watching as a soldier lures a Titan into Hanji's own invention which appears to be a Titan guillotine. As it crushes and kills a Titan, Hanji and Moblet cheer and rejoice in the success of their invention. Hanji states that they can run these all day without the need for soldiers fighting titans or using cannons and other resources, gleefully turning to Eren and informing him that they can mass produce these and put them in every wall city, but is interrupted upon seeing Levi handing Eren a handkerchief for a nosebleed he has. Levi points out that Eren's body likely has a limit for what it can do, and Hanji apologizes to Eren. Hanji accompanies Eren to inquire with Commandant Shaddis about his involvement with Dr. Jaeger. After listening to Keith's story, Hanji becomes irritated, deducing that he retired to the training camp out of feelings of obligation and inferiority to others. Hanji claims that he ran away for a childish reason and tells him not to bring his feelings of inferiority into this matter. Hanji is later present at a military meeting headed by Dallas Zachary. After the meeting ends, Hanji meets with the officials in another room where they're questioned about the contents of the bottle taken from Rod's bag. Hanji states that it's made from spinal fluid thanks to Eren and Historia, but claims that since it evaporates as soon as it touches air, it's hard to research. Noting that this stuff is far beyond their capabilities, Hanji questions what the race family did if they created it. Hanji participates in a meeting of a few scout regiment members in which they explain to Erwin all the information Keith gave to them and Squad Levi. Erwin and Hanji speculate that Grisha may have wanted to help humanity, but was unable to, and ponder what's in the basement of his house in Shiganshina. Hanji is later seen in the dining hall, appalled at the soldiers fighting over the food. The day of the operation, all soldiers are ready at dawn. Hanji and the other high-ranking soldiers exchange salutes with elite members of the other branches and then head to the wall. However, the soldiers are surprised to see the civilians know of the operation goals and begin to cheer for the regiment. Although Hanji and Levi are initially annoyed that word of their departure has spread, they're silenced by the sight of Erwin, ecstatic to have such fanfare for the regiment, cheering along with the civilians. Return to Shiganshina Arc on the way to Shiganshina, the soldiers come across a titan near dawn. When the group illuminates the titan, Hanji briefly observes it and orders them to leave it alone as it's shutting down due to lack of sunlight. Reaching Shiganshina, Erwin orders the scouts to switch to ODM gear. As Hanji and Levi each fire off a signal flare, the two mention how odd it is that they've not seen a single titan and that they're probably playing into the enemy's hands. After Eren succeeds in sealing the outer hole in Walmaria, Hanji's squad begins moving to the second gate to finish sealing the hole. Seeing a signal flare from Erwin, Hanji orders their squad to take up positions atop Wall Maria. It's from there that they witness the sudden appearance of Reiner Brown, followed by the Beast Titan and his army. On Erwin's orders, all the soldiers deploy. Squad Levi, without Levi himself, and Squad Hanji deploy to take down the Armored Titan. Eren transforms and draws Reiner into a fight, while Hanji and the soldiers under them prepare to fight Reiner with their new weapons. As Eren engages Reiner, Hanji's squad begins positioning around the two. Eren maneuvers Reiner into a spot where he can be attacked, and Hanji and Mikasa dash in and take out his eyes with their spears, as other soldiers strike his nape. Hanji then orders another round of spears to be used on his nape, followed by another order of rounds to be prepared for a third attack, but as the squads are preparing, they're caught off guard by a loud roar from Reiner's Titan. Hanji orders that they hit him again, but Armin points out a barrel that had just been thrown into the district. Fearing an attack, Hanji orders their forces to fall back to a safe distance. Once at a safe distance, Hanji observes the barrel as it descends into the district. Seeing Berthold emerge from the barrel, Hanji attempts to go to attack him, but Armin goes ahead of them, insisting that they try reasoning with him first. Hanji and Moblet observe Armin's attempt to reason with Berthold from afar, and when negotiations break down, Hanji orders the rest of their squad to finish off Reiner while they and Moblet pursue Berthold. However, Hanji realizes too late that he's preparing to transform, and both they and Moblet are caught in the resulting explosion. Numerous soldiers are unsure if Hanji survived. When trying to think of a way to defeat the Colossal Titan, Armin recalls Hanji stating that the Colossal was susceptible to drawn out battles. He thinks back to Hanji's experiments with Eren and recalls when they led a squad fighting Berthold on top of Wall Rose, realizing that he must consume flesh to make steam and eventually will run out and be unable to move as a skeleton. Hanji resurfaces in the battle after recovering from the explosion. Still mobile, they aid Squad Levi as they attempt to fight the Armored Titan by using their last Thunder Spear to help blow apart its jaw. 
This opens Reiner's mouth, allowing Mikasa to shoot her Thunder Spear inside and blow him out of his Titan's nape. Hanji interrogates Reiner about a case he had on his person, and Reiner claims it's a letter from Emir to Historia, which Hanji agrees to deliver. When Reiner refuses to give any other information, Hanji prepares to kill him, but is halted by Jean who recommends they feed Reiner to someone injected with the Titan Serum. Hanji insists they must kill him immediately, but Jean continues to press the subject until Hanji sends Mikasa to retrieve the serum, telling her to shoot a flare if she can't, so Hanji will know to kill Reiner. Just as Mikasa fires her flare, Zeke and the Card Titan appear behind Hanji and attempt to kill them. Jean is able to tackle Hanji out of the way, but the two manage to retrieve Reiner and retreat with him. Jean curses his decision to intervene, but Hanji again reminds him that this was their choice. Hanji arrives with Levi's squad to see Eren's group, but finds Mikasa attempting to steal the Titan injection from Levi so that she can use it to save Armin, despite Levi's choice to save Erwin. Hanji apprehends Mikasa, holding her back as Levi prepares the injection for Erwin. Hanji tries to convince her that humanity needs Erwin to be saved, explaining that they'll still require Erwin's leadership. Hanji tells Mikasa that they also wish to bring back people, and tells Mikasa that everyone has to say goodbye someday, insisting that they must move forward. Levi decides to move forward with saving Erwin, and Hanji takes Mikasa and clears the roof with everyone else. However, when Levi regroups with them, he returns with Erwin, having chosen to save Armin. He swears to Erwin that he will kill the Beast Titan, but Hanji notes that Erwin has already died. After Armin awakens atop the wall, Hanji and the others regroup around him and go over the situation from the past four hours and the previous battle. Hanji notes that they believed Erwin should have lived as well, but concedes that there's nothing more to say about their current situation, and that they and Armin will have to carry on in Erwin's stead. Hanji accompanies Levi, Mikasa, and Eren to the Jaeger house. After managing to enter the basement, they notice that at first glance, it looks like an average workplace. Guessing that it was meant to look plain, the four search and uncover a small keyhole on the side of the desk that fits Eren's key perfectly. It reveals a small, empty drawer which Levi finds a false bottom in. Underneath are three books, and together Eren and Mikasa open the first book and find a piece of paper inside. Although it appears to be a drawing at first glance, they note that it looks far too realistic. On the back of the image, they find a note from Grisha, stating that the image is a photograph, and that humanity has not been wiped out beyond the walls. Hanji joins Levi and Armin in visiting Eren and Mikasa in prison, announcing that their sentence has been cut short. The group meets with Historia to speak with her, before meeting with other military commanders and officials to discuss the recent expedition, the journals, and the huge loss of life. Hanji informs the officials about what was discovered from the journals, revealing their role as subjects of Emir, and how they're being hunted by others for once ruling the world and having the potential to rule it again. Despite concerns of revealing this information to the citizens of the Walls, it's decided that they'll announce their findings to the people. Later, the nine surviving scouts are awarded a Medal of Honor in the form of a dark bolo tie with the Wings of Freedom on it. Months later, the scout regiment once again ventures outside of Walmaria on an expedition for the first time in six years. Eventually, they come into contact with a titan that's unable to walk and follow the trail left by its crawling until they reach the edge of Parody Island. Here, the scouts witness the sea for the first time. The soldiers dismount their horses, roll up their pant legs, and step into the water in awe. Hanji is very excited about the discovery of the sea and its scientific value. Marley Ark Roughly a year after the retaking of Walmaria, Hanji brings the scouts to the shore of Parody Island to defend the coast from Marleyan interference. Hanji and Levi capture a soldier from the advance party of the first survey fleet to use as a hostage. As Eren's Titan overpowers and beaches the fleet's main vessel, Hanji welcomes the Marleyan soldiers and offers them tea. The captain refuses and gives his soldiers the order to fire. However, another soldier named Yelena shoots the captain dead and agrees to the invitation. At a camp nearby, Hanji inspects Yelena's Marleyan weaponry in amazement and is shocked when Onyankopon admits that Marley is capable of attacking from the sky. Hanji asks why they've yet to attack with these capabilities and learns that, along with Titan activity making invasion difficult, Marley is in the middle of a war against multiple countries. Hanji correctly guesses that the two are spies working against Marley and is shocked to hear that the one backing their efforts is none other than Zeke Jaeger. At an assembled meeting between the military, Hanji passes on this list of requirements given by Zeke that would ensure his cooperation. The other military heads are initially skeptical about the plan, but Eren is able to back up Zeke's claims, convincing them to work with the volunteers. Hanji works closely with Onyankopon, Yelena, and several other Marleyan soldiers for the next three years, incorporating modern means of transportation like ports and train tracks on the shores of the island. 
Another year passes and Hanji takes the scouts to meet with an ambassador from the nation of Hizuru named Kiyomi Azumabito. Hanji is present during the meeting where Kiyomi outlines the three procedures parody must follow in order to catch up with the other nations of the world, including Historia taking the role of the Beast Titan from Zeke Jaeger. Hanji wonders if all of this would end in 50 years as Kiyomi suggests, or all Titan inheritor families would go through the same thing the race family had for generations. Hanji doesn't think it would be forgivable to leave such a problem for future generations. In 853, Hanji receives word from Hizuru saying that they'll be unable to help Eldia trade with the outside world. Despite being disheartened initially, Hanji decides to hold an expedition to Marley, intending to meet and build trust with the people outside the walls. During the scout regiment's attack on Liberio, Hanji takes command of the airship functioning as a scout's getaway vehicle. After collecting Armin from the nape of his colossal titan, Hanji has Onyankopone follow a path of light set up in the internment zone to ease the scout's extraction. Hanji discusses the risky nature of the plan with Armin, wondering if he has been possessed by the ghost of Erwin. As the scouts retreat to the airship, Hanji leaves Onyankopone to ask Zeke if everything went according to plan. Eren claims that they've bought themselves some time by destroying the leaders of the Marley army and their naval ports, but Hanji retorts that his actions have made the entirety of Parody Island a target to the rest of the world. Hanji reprimands Eren for deciding to use himself as bait again, forcing the scouts to come to save him once more. As a result, Hanji declares that Eren has lost their trust. War for Parody Arc after returning from Marley, Hanji visits Eren in his cell and hears him talking to himself. Hanji tries to get him to open up by reminding him of the first time they met, but Eren isn't in the mood. Although Eren has insisted that there's a better alternative to Zeke's plan to maintaining the rumbling by having Historia bear as many royal-blooded children as possible, Hanji states that no other option has presented itself. Hanji asks him if he no longer cared about Historia, considering all the trouble he's caused by acting independently of the scout regiment. Eren doesn't answer, and instead threatens Hanji by grabbing them through the bars, saying that if there's another way, they should tell him. Hanji pulls free and leaves the prison, calling Eren a rebellious idiot. Outside, Hanji laments that being made commander was Erwin's only mistake before he died. Hanji later receives word that several recruits had leaked Eren's confinement to the press and goes to interrogate them. As Hanji approaches the building where they're held, Hanji is surrounded by members of the press who bombard Hanji with questions. They tell them to take it up with the military police, but is confronted by both Roy and Flagel Reeves. Flagel asks Hanji to look him in the eye and say that he can trust their judgment. After a pause, Hanji merely states it's for the good of the entire Eldian race. Hanji goes in and confronts the leakers, asking Flock why they did it. After hearing it was the free Eren, Hanji reminds the four that his actions have given a reason for the other nations of the world to target them and endangered all their lives. Hanji goes on to say that there's no guarantee the rumbling will even work at all. After hearing Flock ask Eren be freed immediately, Hanji reiterates that they went through with Zeke's plan, but the responsibility is still Hanji's. They have the four arrested and taken away to be punished. Alone in the room, Hanji remembers their conversation with Gel Sanis and mentions there's still something they need to do. Hanji meets with Onyankapon, who asks them why the walls are doubting the volunteers after all their cooperation. Hanji apologizes for this, telling him that this was not what they envisioned. When he agrees, Hanji fearfully looks into his eyes for confirmation. Hanji tells him about the secret meeting between Yelena and Eren, and Onyankapon shows himself to be unaware of this, though does not deny that it was likely. Hanji asks him to inform on Yelena, who he says had shown her loyalty to Zeke by her ruthlessness towards suspect Marleyan comrades. Hanji finds it odd that Yelena had acted so ruthlessly towards Marleans, yet had been very outspoken in convincing the military to respect the captured soldiers' human rights. Believing him to be innocent, Hanji releases Onyankopon from his house arrest and takes him. During an emergency military meeting, Hanji provides an alibi for the volunteers, stating that they're under house arrest while Onyankopon was with Hanji all day. Hanji is shocked to hear Eren has escaped his confinement and blocked the tunnel he made to cover his escape. Hanji informs the military officials that the Jaegerist's purpose is to put Zeke and Eren in contact with one another before purging the scouts with Eren at their center. Hanji then mentions the military's plan to transfer the founding from Eren to another soldier is what triggered the rebels' response. Rogue then demands Hanji take responsibility, but is interrupted by Pixis, who insists they stop bickering amongst themselves. Pixis then asks Hanji how many people know about Zeke's location before ordering to secure them. Afterwards, he announces they should surrender to Eren and begin negotiations, much to everyone's surprise. After the meeting concludes, Hanji and the other scouts leave to investigate the Marlins in suspicious lines of work, since they need to find out Zeke's intention before making bigger fools of themselves. The Survey Corps officers later arrive at a restaurant and are told by Niccolo to wait in another room while he attends to other guests. 
Hanji is later called to the other room to find Niccolo threatening to kill two Marleyan warrior candidates. After surrendering himself, Niccolo asks Hanji to rinse the wine from the mouth of the wounded candidate, revealing that the wine likely contains Zeke's spinal fluid. While Niccolo explains the reasons for his suspicion, Hanji washes out the candidate's mouth. Kane explains how Eldians who drank the wine should have frozen up, but Hanji explains that this could have been easily made up by Zeke to throw off suspicion. After more discourse, Hanji orders those present to take measures to prevent ingesting the wine. Hanji sends Onyan Capone out of the room to tell Mikasa and Armin the same. While helping bathe the warrior candidate in the back room, Hanji hears Onyan Capone call their name. Opening the door in curiosity, Hanji is shocked to find Flock and the Jaegerists holding Onyan Capone hostage. With guns pointed at the core, Flock demands that Hanji take them to find Zeke, declaring that Eren has refused the military's ultimatum. While being bound, Hanji accosts Flock that they don't have the time to be fighting one another, as Zeke's wine ploy has put everybody into the palm of his hands. By his apathetic reaction, Hanji is able to deduce that Flock already knew about the wine, though he smugly instructs Hanji to keep quiet. The Jaegerists then take the group to Shiganshina district. En route, Falco experiences a sudden shock, causing Hanji to realize that Zeke has activated his spinal fluid. After arriving in Shiganshina district, the Jaegerists interrupt the 109th training corps during a defense exercise. Flock demands that all of the assembled trainees join the Jaegerists, and they prove their loyalty by brutally beating their instructor Keith Shaddis, much to Hanji's shock. Hanji implores Flock to stop this, but Keith assures them that he'll be okay. After the Jaegerists turned trainees finish beating him, Flock demands that Hanji lead them to Zeke as Hanji gazes sadly at the injured instructor. As the Jaegerists head towards the Titan Forest where Zeke was being watched by Levi and 30 members of the Survey Corps, Hanji hears the explosion of a thunder spear and realizes that it came much closer than the forest. Flock and the Jaegerists go to investigate and they all discover the remains of a wagon along with a Titan nearby. Hanji then spots a soldier near the river and goes over to investigate and is horrified to see that it's a severely wounded Levi. When a soldier volunteers to shoot Levi in the head as a precaution, Hanji responds that there's no need to. Recognizing the wounds as coming from the Thunder Spear, Hanji proclaims Levi to be dead after suffering from severe internal injuries due to being caught up in the blast. Flock goes to check for sure, but the nearby Titan begins to suck seam into itself and dissipates before a fully healed Zeke emerges from the Titan's stomach, much to everyone's surprise. Taking advantage of the distraction, Hanji quickly takes Levi and escapes by diving into the river while being fired upon by Jaegerists on horseback. After killing their pursuers, Hanji dresses Levi's wounds. Hanji laments the situation they've been placed in, but begins fashioning a sled for Levi out of his destroyed wagon shortly after. As Hanji's working, Eren announces the start of the rumbling to all Eldian people through the paths, much to Hanji's horror. The message manages to rouse Levi, and the two resolve to find a way to stop Eren. While transporting Levi, Hanji comes upon the Cart Titan and a Marleyan soldier before approaching them, insisting that Levi and themselves are harmless. Hanji and Levi are able to convince the warriors and the four agree to join forces. Hanji sneaks into Shiganshina and contacts Jean and Mikasa. Hanji informs the two of the plan to join forces with Marley to stop Eren and asks that they also take part. Although Mikasa agrees, Jean is hesitant. Hanji tries to argue that even if Eren stopped, his threat will stave off any attacks on parody for a number of years and give them more time to broker peace with the outside world. Jean's continued objections cause Hanji to become angry and scream their objection before apologizing. Hanji admits that their refusal to act is what forced Eren's hand, but they also make it clear that they don't believe any of their fallen comrades in the Survey Corps would have been happy simply saving one island when the rest of the world was at stake. Hanji feels as though they can see the souls of their dissatisfied fallen comrades surrounding them. Hanji admits that they're no longer Jean and the other's superior, but they're still the 14th commander of the Survey Corps. Jean then states that he's also a member of the Survey Corps and agrees to join Hanji in their pursuit. After the Car Titan rescues Jean, Onyan Capone, and Yelena from the Jaegerists, and Mikasa arrives with more reinforcements, the amassed soldiers all have dinner together. Tensions run high between the warrior unit and the Survey Corps, and Hanji is forced to intercede in their arguments that break out while Hanji is cooking. The group travels to the Parody Harbor to use the Zumabito clan's airship, only to find that the Jaegerists had already occupied it. Hanji deduces from the fact that the airship is still intact that the Jaegerists are not yet certain that anyone plans to oppose Eren and will not destroy the airship unless absolutely necessary. As Hanji is watching the harbor, they realize that, based on the trail of steam left by Eren's Colossus Titans, Marley has likely already begun to feel the effects of the rumbling. With little time left to act, the group hatches a plan to trick Flock into freeing the Izumabito mechanics so that they can activate the airship. 
The plan goes awry, and Flock alerts the Jaegerists in the harbor that they're under attack. Hanji, Magath, and Jean help Mikasa escort the Izumabito to the basement of the building they're being held in, giving Reiner and Annie the freedom to transform and fight the Jaegerists as titans. While sheltered, the mechanics inform the group to their horror that it'll take them at least half a day to prepare the flying boat for launch. Hanji laments that even if they get the boat running, the amount of time it'll require and the rate that Eren's titans are traveling will mean that they'll have no chance of saving Liberio. Kiyomi suggests bringing the flying boat to an island off Marley's coast, Odiha, where it can be serviced quicker, which the group agrees to. Hanji brings news of the new plan to Mikasa before engaging the Jaegerists themselves, helping to distract them as the Izumabitos go to the ship. However, Hanji turns their attention to the Jaegerists' reinforcements arriving by train and is baffled when it's derailed. Once the ship's ready to leave, Hanji helps an injured peak board it before the group departs. Once on the boat, Hanji and Kiyomi reveal to the group that they'll be heading to Odiha instead of Liberio, much to the warrior's distress. Hanji also states that Liberio can't be saved anymore, which prompts Annie to try and leave the group, and Hanji attempts to talk her down by reminding her that there are more lives at stake than just Marley and Liberio. Upon reaching Odiha, Hanji has the Ozumobito mechanics begin preparing the flying boat for departure, while Hanji interrogates Yelena about Eren's next destination. Yelena admits that Eren will likely be heading to Fort Salta, but she asks in exchange for Hanji to admit that Zeke's euthanization plan was correct. Hanji only agrees to admit that Eren provided no better options and that they are powerless to do anything. As preparations for the flying boat near completion, Hanji and the remaining Survey Corps soldiers equip their gear. Hanji attempts to give the warriors a chance to back out, but Reiner and Piek insist on continuing with them. As the soldiers and warriors return to preparing, Hanji asks Levi if he believes that their fallen comrades are watching them. Hanji's musings are interrupted by Flock, who arrives in the hangar and begins firing his pistol. Mikasa manages to mortally injure him, but Flock succeeds in rupturing the flying boat's fuel tank, and the mechanics tell Hanji it'll take an hour to fix. Before they can start the repairs, though, the group realizes that they can feel the ground rumbling. As Armin and Reiner argue on who will stay behind and slow down the rumbling's advance, Hanji interrupts them, stating that they can't use any more of their titan's powers. Hanji states their intention to stay behind and names Armin the 15th commander of the Survey Corps. As Hanji departs, the former commander takes a moment to say goodbye to Levi and is left ecstatic to hear him dedicate their heart for the first time. Flying out to meet the Titans, Hanji takes a moment to admire the sight of the Titans before engaging them. Hanji quickly uses up their two Thunder Spears to take down two Titans and, seeing that the group will need more time, prepares to kill using their blades. Getting close enough to kill the Titans with blades cause Hanji to immediately begin suffering burns, but they manage to endure the heat long enough for the flying boat to take off before succumbing to their injuries. Hanji awakens on the trampled ground, worried for the flying boat and its occupants, but Erwin reassures them that it successfully departed and their sacrifice had paid off. Overjoyed to be reunited with all their fallen soldiers, Hanji recounts the hardships experienced as commander while many friends listen in. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. 